Hey, it's Mazzy. Welcome back. Whack-a-mole number 191. It's a lot of whack-a-moles. Five random records each. But before I start, I need to talk to you about something. 20 years ago, Wilco put out this album, A Ghost is Born on None Such Records. I like this record quite a bit. I love this cover of this bird nest. And in the back bottom, this simple design of some broken eggshells. You know, there's a lot to talk about today, but I'm just going to pull these records. But I think the reason we are where we are today is because Americans want cheap eggs. It kind of sums it up. Is that a metaphor for something? No, I think it's exactly what it's about for the most part. Five random pulls. Let's have at it. One. Two. Three. I need the exercise today, especially. Four and five. One scene feels like a double album. We'll see what they are. Question mark in the Mysterians had that big hit. I'd make a 1966 with what's the song? Um, come on, question mark in the Mysterians. Huge hit. Now, yeah, put it under a Q. Question mark in the. Uh, da, 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 da. What's the song here? 96 Tears, of course. 96 Tears. One of the great garage hits of 66. 66, you know, when I think of 1966, obviously, I think of Revolver and uh, some great kink stuff and was it a lot of stuff that year. But it was a big year for garage rock. Obviously, Incense and Pepper, all that kind of stuff. That's 67. But 66, to me, garage rock really started and went into 67 and got more psychedelic but it was really kind of you know now we could call it proto-punk uh cameo records i don't really know much about that label but um there's the band you always had to have one guy with dark glasses like this of course remember like guy saxon and with the seeds and then later you'd have john k with steppenwolf those kind of wrap around uh, dark sunglasses so 96 Tears, great, great garage rock. And um, that's all I can say about that. Part of my childhood. I loved it. 12 years old, rocking around. Wonderful song. Stone Ground, family album. Now, Stone Ground, my friend Coleman, I think this was from my fr late friend's Coleman collection. So wherever you are, Coleman, we miss you. I miss you. I love you. I've known you now. Well, I met you 51 years ago now. And I lost you about three years ago now. This is a double album. Stone Ground was this huge, massive troupe that I saw only once at Winterland. Coleman loved this band. And there's a whole story behind uh, the band. Uh, kind of put together by Sal Valentino who was the original member and that distinctive voice from the Bo Brummels. Remember, laugh, laugh. Um, I love the Bo Brummels. They were actually the first America's Answer to the Beatles. Pretty Birds, 1964, laugh, laugh was a hit. On uh, Autumn Records, produced by Sly Stone, uh, who was a DJ at that Sly Stone, who would start Sly and the Family Stone, and manage and kind of co-produced Tom Donahue, the father of Underground Radio, who was an AM radio at KYA in San Francisco. Uh, Stone Ground also had a guy, John Blakey, great guitar player, who played uh, with Van Moore, played a lot of people. He was a great guitarist, studio, would tour with a bunch of people. And for many years, he was Coleman Burke's roommate in San Francisco, my friend Coleman. So I met John over the years. Uh, Lydia Moreno is a vocalist, but this was one large band. They're kind of a, a soulful rock band 
Um, this is from a live broadcast from on KSAN Radio, that underground radio station that Tom Donahue originally um, started with. And this is produced by Tom Donahue, Sal Valentino, and Ron Elliott. And Sal and Ron Elliott were two members of the Bull Brummels, the two lasting members who put together that great kind of first country a rock album, Bradley's Barn, around the same time as uh, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. But, um, you know, again, a little bit of a soul gospel rock, rock thing happening. And I've done videos on, on how the whole rock gospel thing happening around 68, 69 into 71 to Delaney and Bonnie and Leon Russell and My Sweet Lord and, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. There was a kind of a I don't want to say God rock, you know, they weren't necessarily all religious people, but they they used that kind of music, that kind of gospel music as sort of the core for this rhythm and blues and rock stuff, which is really great. I'm a big fan of that music. So uh, Stone Ground, San Francisco band, long gone, had more of a cult audience. They were popular live in the Bay Area. I don't know if they got out of the Bay Area much, but um, I really, really like them. Oh, we're really kind of going in the 60s here, too, now. Harper's Bazaar, Bizarre, Feeling Groovy, huge hit, a huge AM hit written by Paul Simon, and he gave it away. I remember there's one live record or interview, maybe someone can remind me in the, in the gallery here, in the comments of Art Funkel announcing them doing this song. I mean, the song Paul gave away, we should add a hit of it. But... Um, 59th Street Bridge song, Feeling Groovy. Now, interesting, this guy. Okay, this guy is Ted Templeton. He became a A&R producer for Warner Brothers Records, and you know him from a ton of records, including like in the late 70s, Van Halen. But he produced a lot of Warner Brothers Records. I bet you everyone watching probably has at least one record in their collection produced by Ted Templeton after the, you know, they didn't really kind of go beyond this. They were in that sunshine pop, sunshine pop rock thing like uh, the Association. The Association were the more popular band in terms of they had a number of hits. So Windy, uh, Long Comes Mary, a few other things. Uh, Never My Love. I, I love sunshine pop. This is an excellent record. Um, John Peterson too, was he in the... Um, I think John Peterson might have been also in the Bo Brummels on here. But um, Debutante's Ball with Piano, Randy Newman. You know, this is really in that kind of Baroque pop sunshine thing with Van Dyke Parks and Randy Newman. Very incestuous stuff. Like I wouldn't, ah, produced by Lenny Warnicker, the other staff producer who over the years, um, you know, produced a ton of stuff for Warner Brothers and they all worked together. Arranged by Leon Russell, Randy Newman, Peter Botkin Jr. Remember that hit he had? Oh, and the photographs by my late, I don't want to say friend, but a, a photographer that I used to love. And it was tempestuous. I've told stories about here. Jim Marshall, who took the famous Johnny Cash picture at uh, San Quentin, who took the famous Miles Davis in a boxing ring photograph, who took... Jimi Hendrix on Fire, you know, the whole Monterey stuff. A lot of great albums, uh, John Coltrane Ballads album. A lot of jazz, soul, rock records. Cover of Almond Brothers at the film where he's Jim Marshall. So Feeling Groovy, 59th Street Bridge Song. Oh. Electric Light Orchestra Zoom. One of their later records, but this is a really good record if you like ELO. Now, the thing about this period of ELO, what year did this come out? This came out 2013, so it's just 11 years old. I don't love this as much as the 70s ELO, you know, the, the core, the great albums. But Jeff Lynne's voice is as good as ever on it. The thing about this, this is, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct, and I think I am, He's basically playing everything. And I always thought that he should not play drums or not use program drums or whatever he's using. Uh, since Bev Bevan left ELO, he had that thundering stuff, thundering sound of ELO, which I actually like how bombastic he uh, produces his records. And there is a certain compression that 
Jeff Lynn likes on ELO records. And that's part of their charm. If you like it, you don't expect them to be really dynamic records. They sound good. They sound great blasting. They sound cool on the radio. This is all him. So basically, ELO is now a project. It has been for, God, what, 20 years when he's come back and he's produced some things. It's pretty much all him. And then he has a huge, massive band on tour and vocals and, you know, and emulates and reproduces the music pretty wonderfully. But this is a successful record. It's got your typical you know, CG illustration of uh, the flying saucer thing. I think I did see the big flying saucer. Was that 77, 78, the Out of the Blue Tour? I think I saw them like four times in the in the 1970s. I'm thinking they were on a bill. Middle Act to Little Feet. Unless I'm wrong about that. I missed might be misremembering the specific act, but they were like a middle act one time. I saw them at Winterland, but um, fine album, Zoom. And lastly, okay, this is the magnificent remasters, digital remasters by, <laughs> by, um, Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin's album, Presence. You know, I never fell in love with this. This is the reissue because during my 95 Purge, I dumped all my Led Zeppelin albums. And my guess is I had a pristine RL at home. But we didn't know about dead wax and pressings and nobody talked about specific pressings back in the 70s or 80s. And I did get this as a habit because when I worked at the store, I would take home every Led Zeppelin album and I listened to some more than others. My guess is my copy I listened to in the store more than I listened to my copy at home. So all these Zeppelin albums were pristine shape. But this is the expanded uh, when they did that series. You know, a lot of people like to, you know, put these down. He apparently doesn't want to do all analog. His choice. He's the artist. You know, at, at this point, you know, he doesn't want to do those. Um, I'm not going to argue with them. These are, I don't mind these as much, as much as I listen to it especially. This is the one that has the extra disc of outtakes. I love the cover art by Hypnosis. You know, I'll be honest with you, I don't even know this album as well as the other Led Zeppelin albums. I played it. I probably couldn't name a bunch of songs off to you. Uh, I couldn't, and I'll be honest with you. But uh, I like this obelisk thing, and apparently when Hypnosis, Strom, Ferguson... Uh, design this they design some of these orbs to give away so if you have one orbs monolith what are they called it's icon it's just kind of a fun quirky thing so in a lot of ways I like the cover art on this one better than I like uh, the music on it I know that sacrilege if you're a huge zeppelin fan but I think what I'm going to do well I'm not in the mood to play today I need something more kind of serene today on this Wednesday. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I love making videos and sharing music from my collection, new music that comes through here. And uh, I try to be realistic and genuine about the music I showcase and have a little fun occasionally. So if you like it, subscribe, press the like button. I don't even want you to press that bell. I don't want to disturb you in the middle of the night. Uh, if a video drops. But again, thanks again. Uh, I do love most of you. Nancy loves you. Thank you very much.